Hello everybody, and are we having fun yet? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh yes, I'm having fun, because I'm getting ready to make a flight today. Do you want to join me? Then so you shall. And where are we going to fly to, do you ask? Right. Well, a YouTuber by the name of Ray Thomas wrote me and he said, how about a flight between Geneva, that's L-S-G-G, over the Alps to Ajaccio, which is L-F-K-J, on the wonderful island of Corsica. Well, of course I can do that. And in fact, Corsica is a beautiful island. I remember visiting there and touring all over Corsica many, many years ago. I think the dinosaurs had just gone extinct <laughs> right about that time. <laughs> anyway, Corsica, in case you don't know, is a mountainous Mediterranean island with a mix of stylish coastal towns, dense forests, and craggy peaks. No kidding. Now, French is Corsica's official language. That's the working language there, but you will find there most people are bilingual or even trilingual. French being the official language, Italian being the other language, and then mainly in the rural areas, there is the Corsu language, that's the original one. Now, some little trivia, a little bit of trivia. Corsica is not a very big island as islands go, but do you know there's over 300 churches built there on Corsica? Of course, as a priest, I would know things like that. It's a lot of fun to visit all those wonderful, beautifully designed churches. And the other little bit of trivia, and it's not a small thing, but there's a very famous person that was born right there in Ajaccio itself. Do you know who it was? That's right. Napoleon Bonaparte was born there. He was born in Ajaccio on 15th of August in 1769. Now, Corsica became a province of France that very same year. Now, the ancestral home of the Bonaparte family is still there, and it's located on the Rue Saint-Charles in Ajaccio itself. And today, it is a museum. But you know, there's a lot of things to see in the town of Ajaccio. Of course, there's a lot of monuments to Napoleon, he's their favorite son there, you can understand. And there are some beautiful, beautiful Mediterranean style villas dotted all around the island. There are hiking trails, mountains to climb, and wonderful sun-soaked beaches to lie on with the gentle Mediterranean lapping up on the sandy shores. Sounds idyllic, doesn't it? So, is that a good place to go to today, do you think? I am so glad that you agree. Now, we're going to do something a little different today. Because when Ray Thomas wrote me, he said, if the wind and weather will permit, he said, runway 20 is quite a challenge if the wind will allow you. Well, of course the wind will allow us. 
we don't care what the real wind is like because we can make the wind do what we want to do, yes? <laughs> you know, that's most godlike. Sorry, boss. <laughs> yes, well, not quite godlike then, just Dane like. How about that? <laughs> okay, then. Now, I've got a couple of wonderful sceneries, actually, one, one scenery. The Geneva scenery is made by Aerosoft. That's Geneva LSGG. Airport scenery is made by Aerosoft. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any uh, commercial scenery or freeware scenery for Ajaccio itself. So we're going to use P3D default. And we're going to be following, because I did check out that there are flights between Geneva and Ajaccio. So we're going to be flying on the route of EasyJet Flight 1305. 1305. Or U2-1305. And if you put that into Flight Aware, it will bring up the flight history. Right. So, are you ready to fly over the Alps to the wonderful, beautiful island of Corsica? Good. Then let's go into pre-flight and see what we can get done, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at the EasyJet Flight 13. 05. And here you can see the designator U21305. This particular one arrived over a day ago. It departed from Geneva from gate F11 and it landed in the Jaxio Napoleon Bonaparte Airport. How about that? The favorite son is also the name of the airport. And it landed there and it said it left eight minutes early and landed 10 minutes early. So that's pretty good going. We are going to have to do just as well if we're going to save face. Now here is the route that they took. You can see they departed Geneva right here and going out, flying right over the Alps, crossing over Italy and France border a couple of times before going over the Mediterranean, and then this particular flight swung around and came in on the runway from the south. We are going to need to come in on the runway to the north if we're going to come in on runway 20, which is why we're going to make our own wind direction. Looking at the cruising altitude, this is a, an Airbus A320 that made this flight and they flew at 29,000 feet, so we will do the same. All right, we'll go straight into Simbrief. There's no reason to look at the wind because we're going to make our own wind direction in the program itself. So, but we do need to have a flight plan to work out the amount of fuel we're going to need and some of the other information that we need to put into the uh, FMC. Right, we are Ryanair, we are number 186. We're going to depart from LSGG, LSGG, and we're going to go to LFKJ. So LF. KJ. LIRF is our alternate. We'll look at that in a moment. Our airframe is this one. We are a 737-800. Cruise profile is six and there is our registration. It says the scheduled flight time is one hour and 25. We are, oh, this has come up with 20 on that one, but we're going to actually also depart from runway 22 
because we're changing the wind direction to be generally all blowing the same direction, which I'll show you once we get into the cockpit. Our altitude is going to be 290. Passengers, of course, we are four, and we do have one ton of very important cargo. Let's see, what can it be? Of course, it's champagne and caviar. And not your common run-of-the-mill plonk champagne either. It's only the best French champagne. <laughs> anyway, here is the route that it's come back with. This uh, Medify Bravo is the uh, standard instrument departure and the very two franc uh, Foxtrot, that is the arrival star. Route distance is 308 nautical miles. Here is the route coming down right over here, over the top of Monaco and coming into Ajaccio right here. And here, right there, is Rome Fumicino. In case of things going pear-shaped, that is where we will go to. All right, let's save this and let's generate the flight plan. Right, here's the basic information that's come up. We have flight number, our aircraft type. There's the origin, there's the destination, there's the alternate. That's Rome Fumicino. And airtime is 56 minutes. This is the block fuel that we're going to need. Now, we needed to use SimBrief in order to find out really what the amount of fuel we would need. There's the routing and dispatcher's remarks are none. Looking down at the flight plan, we are Ryanair 186. The F290 is our uh, cruising altitude and there is the flight route. LIRF is our alternate, and there's the information underneath. We're going to need to know cost index six. Now, average wind, we'll put this in anyway, even though obviously this is real wind, real direction, and we are artificially generating our own. Block fuel is right there, 6796, almost 6.8 metric tons. Reserves 3,342 or 3.3 in metric tons that we'll need. Trip and taxi 2,774, pretty much 2.8 metric tons. No tankering recommended. And here is the actual route. This is the official route. Now we'll put this in the description box below the video. Now here is the wind aloft levels and speeds and also temperatures. I'm really not sure how much of an impact the real live weather is going to have on our programming, but just in case, this is the information. Normally, we would be putting in this information for flight level 200, that's 20,000 feet, flight level 150 or 15,000 feet, and flight level 100 or 10,000 feet. Now, this is the winds aloft, the real winds that are blowing right now, and this is at flight level 300, which is 1,000 feet above our actual flight altitude. And you can see that they're blowing generally from the northwest to southeast. And while it said that runway 20 at Ajaxio was in use, that obviously can change. So it's just as well that we're making our own wind. And this is just basically a guide. We'll have to see just how that translates when we get into the flight. And here is our vertical profile. 
starting out from Geneva. We climb all the way to the top of climb here to our cruising altitude, across to the top of descent, and then down through these points. And this is a critical point right here, the KJ601. That is our uh, initial approach fix. And then LFKJ, of course, is Ajaccio, our destination there. And these, look at these. Ha. These are the Alps that we will be crossing over. And of course, we are now officially in autumn. So we'll have to see what the uh, weather and the scenery looks like as we cross over. Way up here is the tropopause and we are going to be well below it, so no impact on us. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. Here we are, we click on flight, new flight from Simbrief, and there is the flight itself. Let's go to our start, we open up the charts list. We're going to need to pin the airport to the bottom we need to know the parking stands and we'll be departing runway 22 and there's the let's look at this chart this is the departure uh, on runway 22 so we will be taking this so i'm going to pin that and then over to our destination, I'll bring up and open up the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport. And here is our destination airport right here. Control tower and stands are right on the front right here. The runway is 7,897 feet long. So more than enough for us to be able to land on. So we'll pin it and we'll pin the parking stands. Let's have a look. We will try to be right here. If we can make it, we'll come in on stand number four. It's calling, as you know, for a runway approach. So I'm going to pin this and here we are. This is the actual approach that we'll be using. There's the 601 up there. Coming down, making our swing around, we'll cross right over this little peninsula here, uh, right between right over the saddle and then come down to land here. And this is the missed approach in case things go pear shaped. The, this is the Varick to Foxtrot. Right here, you can see that the Varick to Foxtrot approach. So we'll put that in. And for our approaches, since we're coming in on our runway, Kate on 601, let's put that in and see what happens. And let's bring up our overlay chart and look at that. It's right on it. So there is our route. Look at that. How perfect can that be, eh? How perfect can that be? All right. Well, we have all the information that we need and there's our route. So we've got some interesting views that we should be able to see as we cross over the Alps and then cross over here by Nice and Monaco. There's Cannes down there and coming down then onto this beautiful island of Corsica. All right. Let's go into the cockpit and let's get ourselves ready, shall we? Hello there, Ray Thomas. Do come on in and take your seat. Buckle up and 
let's get ourselves ready to make the flight that you requested. Now, where are we? We are in Geneva at LSGG. That's Geneva code. And we're going to go to Ajaccio in your native Corsica, I think. Anyway, that's where we're going to go. So right here, you can see that we are at stand 11. This is stand 11. And uh, the scenery is made by Aerosoft. This is Aerosoft scenery. So let me show you what this looks like right here so that you can get an idea of the complexity of the scenery. Looking over to the left, you can see the jetways and there's the sky above and there's a lot of detail in these windows. They are uh, semi-transparent. So this is really rather, rather delightfully put together. And where we are at Stand 11 is right next to the a road there with <laughs> kamikazes who are looking around in frustration for someone to target. <laughs> so that's where we're at. We are at stand 11 and our frame rate is a glorious 20, 21, 20, right around 20 frames per second, which is pretty darn good. I am not using Active Sky on this particular flight because you requested a um, an approach into Ajaccio on runway 20. Now, Active Sky, of course, is going to return real life weather and also wind conditions. So what I did is I not used Active Sky on this. Instead. I've used the native um, scenery for clear skies. I went into the weather and chose clear skies. Then I clicked on the wind and it brings up a panel. And this panel, then I was able to go around and make it 200. So now the weather is actually 200 degrees. That's the direction the weather is coming from. So that means we will be departing from runway 22 in uh, Geneva and landing on runway 20 in Ajaccio. How about that? Little bit of magic that you can do. And the weather scenery is pretty accurate to the real live weather anyway. So it's not bad over Europe at the moment. And uh, so we should have a very good flight. Okay, let's get ourselves then started up here. We, we turn on the battery right here and we make sure that we have enough volts because then we're going to go down here, turn on the fuel pumps and then down here we turn on the APU. Now the APU once it starts so there's the APU switch and then the low oil pressure light comes on and then this will start to climb and then after a moment the low oil pressure light will go out which it just did. That tells me that it is working properly. It's gone to its highest point and now it will start to descend. This is like a, a small jet engine in the tail of the aircraft, you know, and it will generate power as well as give us heat and air conditioning. Now I'm looking now for a light. There it is. Click that on and then looking up here, we now have 115 volts in our system. Just that easy. So now that we've got that going, I can then turn on the IRS, which is our GPS system, turn on the galley, 
turn on the emergency exit lights no smoking switch here and it's fasten seat belts there and then over here I'm going to go to the left and the right window heat leave the probes as they are for the moment and then turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps the light that you see here the forward service and the equipment that's the forward hatch that is open and the air stairs that are down at the moment and those are electrically driven then over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed recirculating fans left and right and then the packs and listen there's that rush of air now going through the cabin to freshen it up outside air temperature here today is 12 degrees not particularly the warmest at the moment but it is reasonably accurate for this time of year so we need a little bit of heat on the inside and I can now see that our self-loading cargo is already queuing up to board and turn on the steady light and that is everything that we need at this particular point all right now it's time to program the FMC so the first thing that we do is we check that the air rack is in date and this has just changed so I have the latest air rack data and that the program is showing no errors so I go to position initialization and we are at LSGG that is our starting point and we are at stand 11 so let's put 11 in and it comes right up with the precise coordinates so I'm going to put that into the temporary here and then transfer it to active so now we have our starting position uh, for our GPS now we go to the root origin is LSGG and we're going to go to LFKJ so LF and KJ we are Ryanair the pirate itself and we're number 186 which we should be flying a black <laughs> black flag shouldn't we <laughs> go to next page now taking our route directly from the flight plan our first waypoint is Medam so M-E-D-A-M and that will be the top one then we take the Yankee 24 so Yankee and 24 and that will take us then to Viva so V E B A R and then we take the uniform mic 623 so uniform mic 62 and 3 and that will take us then to Varek V A R and EK and that's it we activate that execute now we go to fix because we want to put our destination airport in up here and then put circles around it on our screen for our use for when we are arriving so our destination is LFKJ LFK and J we need a four mile circle we need a 10 mile circle and we need a 30 mile circle just like that go to descent go to forecast transition level is set by ATC so we're not going to worry about that but we are going to need to put the information in for these three flight levels that's flight level 200 flight level 150 and flight level 100 which is 20,000, 15,000 and 10,000 feet 
1013 it is standard pressure today now the airspeed and direction we take from the flight plan although it may have little effect upon our actual flight today since we're not using active sky but the information for flight level 200 would be 304 at 36 so 304 at 36 and then it's 307 31 307 31 for that one and the final one is 303 at 30 so 303 at 30 that's the final and execute that now we go to departures and arrivals we are pretty sure it's going to be 22 but let's first of all listen in to the ATIS at this airport and see what they say Geneva Airport Information Whiskey 1142 Zulu Wind Calm Visibility Greater than 20 miles Sky Condition Few Clouds at 4300 Temperature 1 2 Dew Point Altimeter 2 1 0 1 3 Landing and departing runway 2 2 left and runway 2 2 right VFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft red back hold short instructions Advise controller on initial contact you have Whiskey well, we have whiskey and they are telling us that the runway 22 left and 22 right is in use, which is very interesting because I only show one runway here, so one little little glitch. Let's hope that's the only one that we get. So I'm going to put in 22 and naturally we're going to be using the Madame 5 Bravo departure. So the Madame 5 Bravo departure. Now we go back to departures and arrivals, go to arrival and now we're going to be coming in on RNAV 20 right there and it is the Varek 2 Foxtrot arrival. So go down, there it is, the Varek 2 Foxtrot arrival and the transition is KJ601 and we'll put that in. Now we go to legs and let's check to see how this flight plan is working out. Okay, now I'm just going to go through each of these but first I'm going to turn this to plan so it makes the circles right there. So I'm now going to step through each of these legs and let's see what it gives us so there's our first turn we turn to the left to climb out and then we take this route this is our departure so going down there's Medan there's Veva Basso and keep going there's Vare now there the KJ601 that is our initial approach fix and this then will take us around that curve to come in to land right on that runway of 20 now that's the RNAV and it looks like it's straightforward plan there so no issues clicking back to map then I'm going to put the weather on, double click. Now that double click I just did, put the data switch on. Now I'm going to switch this to a 20 mile radius because that is a lot easier to, to use. Now over here I'm going to put terrain on for yours and there is quite a bit of activity suddenly popped up. I'll do a double click for data as well on yours. Now I'm going to turn the TCAS on so we are all set and ready. Now I need to go through and do the route and here's where we are going to perform the initialization. So we have 6,796 kilograms of fuel on board we're going to need 3,342 kilograms, that's 3.3, so I'll put 
3.3 N2 reserves and then add to that the trip and taxi which is 2774 that comes to 6116 or 6.1 6.1 is our plan fuel cost index is 6 our cruising altitude is 290 the cruise wind, the average wind, the lock is 306 at 34, so 306 at 34, we'll put that in. The transition altitude is 5,000 feet, so we'll put that in. Double click the zero fuel weight and it makes the calculation for us. And then we just simply click execute there. Go to N1 limit. We'll take the 12 degrees that we've got there. We're not going to do any derates or bumps. We're going to use flaps 10 for our takeoff. Double click that and it gives us the center of gravity and then the value on the trim wheel. One click on each of these gives us the values of V1, rotate and liftoff speed of 145. So now we need to put the information in that for the rest of everything. So if we're departing on runway 22, then that is 224 on course setting for departure. So 224. So I'll put 224 in here. 224 in this as well. And I'll do yours if that's okay. All right, thank you, Ray. So 224. Good. Now I'm going to put in our cruising altitude. I know that's uh, a little premature, but I put that up there. Now I'm gonna put 29,000 feet up here as well, because that is for pressure. Our landing altitude is 17 feet, so I'm going to leave that at zero. And then the max speed, as we just saw, is 145, so I'll put 145 in here. Okay, got that. Now, I'm going to turn on the your damper and the continuity light went out now i'm going to click the flight director on my side flight director on your side v nav l nav and look at that we have a green light on both meaning that it is working and there's the auto throttle now i'm going to turn this to adf1 on this side and vor2 on that side so I'll do the same here because I've set the frequency in the ADF on our destination see right here this is 387 and that that is the value of CT that's the non-directional beacon CT that's at 387 at the frequency. Now this one, that is RB. That's another NDB. And I've got that in backup just in case. But the VOR2, that's a Jaxio the VOR, and that's 114.8. And I've got that in the second uh, navigation radio over here so 114.8 decimal 8 right there okay everybody's on board and so I'll bring up the stairs close the doors those are the that's the electric motor you can hear for the stairs being retracted
So now I'm going to get our departure clearance and request IFR clearance to Ajaxio. Geneva ground, Ryanair 186, IFR 2, Napoleon Bonaparte, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Victor Alpha Romeo Echo Kilo Airport as file. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000 departure frequency of 119.525 squawk 0152. Ryanair 186 cleared to Victor Alpha Romeo Echo Kilo Airport as file. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000 departure on 119.525 squawk 0152. Ryanair 186 Redback is correct. Contact ground on 118.7 when ready to taxi. Now on the let's since we're going to go to the end of runway 22 which is over there to our left we're going to need to go straight back that's I believe is the procedure here and then we will make our own turn to join the taxiway going out. So, let's do the checklist. Fuel is good, windows are all locked and cleaned by the way. Seatbelt signs are on, check. Door lights are out, check. MCP is programmed good. Takeoff thrust bugs are all done. CDU pre flight is correct. Rudder airline trim is free and clear. Taxi takeoff briefing, we've just done that. Anti collision light is now going on. Navigraph charts is now active and here at the right, so you can see where we are and where we're needing to go so I'll just enlarge that so that you can you can see that you can see where we're at on that south apron and we've got a little ways to go okay so let's ask now the nice people on the ground for a pushback straight out and are you ready are you ready then okay here we Oh, which engine would you like to start first, Ray? Left or right? Number one or number two? You want to start number two? All right, we'll do number two. So I'm going to switch this to generator two. And then as soon as we get pushed back, I'm going to turn off the heat and air conditioning so that we can start the engine. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start tail straight out. We're up to that, ready for push straight back. Release the brakes, please. Parking brake is released. Now, heat and air conditioning is turned off. And as soon as we start to move, I'll turn, switch this to engine start, engine number two. All right, number two is running, and it says out there that we're moving away from the stand. Isn't that interesting? Okay, the start valve has opened, the N2 is winding up. When this gets to 24, we'll bring in the fuel. And there it is, fuel going in. I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature to rise. Oh, and there it does. Wow, look at that. Now for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it did. It's coming along very nicely. Have an Air France next to us. Ah, there, the engine is just caught. Now I'm looking for 115 volts up there. We have that. So starting left one. Break is set. Break is set. The star valve has opened. The N2 is winding up. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute release. 
Now I'm going to go to flaps 10, put the fuel in, and I've switched to generator 1, now I'm looking up here, alright, the engine gas temperature is now rising, looking for the low oil pressure light to go out, and it has, and there it goes, engines are kicking in very nicely. So in a moment, I'm going to look up here for the for 115 volts to appear. There it is. Now I can turn on the air conditioning and heat again, waiting for this tick mark to go out, which it has. So now I push those two, and now we are running from the electricity generated by the main engines. So the air conditioning is on again, turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Just that simple. Now we have the engines are all started. Oh, now we have a slightly different view here. So let me Now there you can see that we are at Geneva Airport, there's the main terminal building right up there. Looking over to the left, there's a lot of detail here, a lot of detail indeed. Look at all of that. And there's a lot of parked aircraft and kamikazes. Oh dear, where would we be without the kamikazes? And then over on the right, there's the Air France aircraft. Okay, got to verify the, the speeds. Everything is looking good. Right, everything is clear. After start, generators are on. Probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valves correct. Engine start levers idle detent. Flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls check. Flaps, we have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down detent. Ground equipment is all clear, so we are now set to go over there. All right. So, are you set? You're all set? Ready to go? Okay, then. Break off. Give a little boost to the power. And let's turn this to the left. scenery here, you know, just beautiful scenery. Now we're going to go down here and so that we don't interfere with aircraft coming in like the one that's over there. Oh, we have some lovely autumn colors out there. Beautiful autumn colors. And there's the kamikazes. They're already loitering with intent.
Now we turn left here and then go on to the main taxiway to go down to the end of the runway. And looking around, making sure that there's nothing coming. Now we're on the main taxiway and we are making our way down now to the threshold of runway 22. Beautiful scenery though, very detailed. Made by Aerosoft is this. There's the cargo terminal over there. There's a FedEx already in, in place. We're expecting to have a nice smooth flight today. No bumps or anything like that. It's, uh, the air is good over Europe at the moment. It's one of those cool days where the air is fairly stable, which means we can use the posh crystal for our champagne. <laughs> only the best, only the best. that you're soaking all of this detail in because it really is really very very good now as I said I am not using active sky today so the weather is just standard fair weather that comes default with P3D which means our frame rate of course has taken an uptick because without the weather it's, we just get some better frame rate and we're now showing 22, 21, 22 so we've just boosted our frame rate a little bit here mountains are looking really nice but we'll have to see what the Alps look like when we fly over them right I'm going to tune in to the tower now Airport information, Zulu, one, two, one, zero, Zulu, wind, calm, visibility, greater than... All right, we'll swing around here and get ourselves to the whole short line and then contact the tower for the parents. Geneva Tower, Ryanair 186, ready fly FR departure runway 22 left. Ryanair 186, clear for takeoff runway 22 left. 
cleared for takeoff runway 22 left Ryanair 186. Right, we are cleared for takeoff. Let's do the before takeoff checked. Everything's good. Engine bleeds are now on. Continuous going on there. Position is still strobe is on. Cabin is secure. And I'm now starting the clock. All right, we'll move out into position. Making sure nothing's coming in, no one's sneaking up on us. And here's the runway coming around. Let's line up on the center line. All right, everything is looking good. Advancing the power to N1. Power is stable, toga button pushed, and there we go. Rotate. V2. V2. And we are off. We have good climb. Gear is up. departure route the lights off start switches are off crew is released to go to work and we're climbing very nicely Here is the view on departure. Now leaving Geneva. And we're coming up to the first layer of cloud. We're making our turn. And that will take us to the intercept course for our departure. Look at the detail. Look at all the autumn colors below. And we're passing through the cloud layer. going on to standard we're now above 10,000 feet so lights are off and fasten seatbelt sign is now off and I'm going to make the adjustments on here for our for 142 for our departure okay we're on our way 
Right, Ray, we made a good departure. Not bad at all. We, we lifted off very nicely. Everything is running absolutely smoothly. Nothing untoward. I can see some snow-capped mountains right there directly ahead of us. Do you see them right over there? So we hopefully will have some good views and I will of course be sure to take some good video as we pass over. But right now it is time for, let's see, don't, don't, don't give me any hints, don't remind me. Oh of course, champagne and caviar of course. So why don't you go on into the back and get yourself some good crystal and fill them up with champagne. And it is French Champagne today, okay? And I'll give you a shout as soon as we are on our approach into Ajaxio in just about an hour, okay? See you then. Ray, come on back in and pour yourself into your seat. <laughs> Did you get enough champagne and caviar? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. All right. <laughs> now, you'll be pleased to know Corsica is directly ahead. And we are about... 30 some nautical miles from the airport. Now, I made uh, one omission. When I reset the wind direction for the um, fair weather in P3D, I forgot to put in a speed, a wind speed. So I've got the wind speed at 16 knots. So here, here is the here is the 80s now 
Napoleon Bonaparte, airport information, Quebec, 1, 2, 5, minor, Zulu, wind, 1, minor, 8, at 1, 6, visibility, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, few clouds at 5,700, temperature, 1, 5, dew point, 5, altimeter, 1, 0, 1, 3, landing and departing, runway, 2, 0, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft, red back hold, short instructions, advise controller on initial contact, you have, Quebec. Now, when I did this first, at earlier, it gave me runway two for a landing which of course it suddenly occurred to me it also said wind was calm and we didn't want calm we wanted some wind coming from 200 degrees to make sure that we would land on runway 20 so i made that change oh now I, let's get in touch with the ground and uh, let's see Napoleon Bonaparte. And full stop landing. The Jaxio Tower, Ryanair 186 is 26 miles northwest near Quebec to land. Ryanair 186, Ajaxio Tower, fly right base, runway 20, altimeter 1013. Fly right base, runway 20, Ryanair 186. All right, we are given our clearance to land runway 20 and flying right base, which exactly is what the RNAV approach on runway 20 is all about. So, we are just now coming up on KJ601 and we are descending to 5,000 feet and hopefully we will be at about 200 knots in just a moment. I have the main runway, the main lights are already on, fasten seatbelt signs is on. So we are coming in, so let's go into flaps one and slow ourselves down. We don't want to be going too fast, we need to be very controlled in coming in onto this runway. And there we go, we're doing all right. We have to cross over, of course, a small headland up ahead, and then we have to swing right to make our landing. So we want to have our airspeed all very controlled. Ah, now the CT uh, ADF has become active. So I now have the ADF needle finding the destination and what we will do is and that's the blue needle on here that's wavering at the moment what we will do is when we swing on to our final and our approach I'm then going to make sure that we follow that needle because CT that non-directional beacon NDB is actually 201 degrees from the airport and we are on 202 degrees pretty close and that should bring us right down onto the airport and as long as I can turn to match that uh, direction we will find the airport and be right on course for landing Right, we're coming up on IKJ20 in just a moment and we'll be coming up onto the 10 mile line and when we get to that I'm going to go to flaps 10 and then when we get to the FKJ20 then I'm going to go into get everything ready then for landing because want to have everything controlled at that point because we won't have time to make adjustments 
uh, you know, dropping gear and all the rest of it if we're busy with all of the preparations. Okay, coming up and we will be at 3,000 feet when we get to IKJ 20. Beautiful countryside here though, and this is the this is the view as we approach the intermediate fix. And there's the little saddle that we have to go over uh, before we turn to the right to make a landing. Somewhere through there, somewhere. But this is Corsica. And look at the, the craggy mountains and everything else. Really, really lovely scenery here. And there we go. We're now we're turning right over to come in on our point. We've just crossed over IKJ20. Right, I'm now going to go to flaps 10. And I'm going to set this for 202, which is our final. And we're coming up. I have your set for a profile for the descent. And hopefully everything will work out on that. But going in between these hills, the runway is down over there somewhere, but I do not yet have it in sight. Ryanair 186, clear to land, runway 20. Clear to land, runway 20, Ryanair 186. We are clear to land, all lights are going on, and crew. Secure for landing, cabin checked, speed brake lever on, detent, okay, and landing gear is down, three green lights, flaps are green lights, we are in configuration, so, I have the runway in sight and we're starting to make our turn so we are on course Caution terrain Yes it would be Caution terrain Right I have the terrain inhibitor on And we're turning on to final. I have control. Two white, two red. Now I'm lining up on for final. 
we are committed to land. 500. 500. Four hundred. We're coming in. Gear down. Everything's looking good. Three hundred. And looking all right. Two hundred. Approaching minimums. Fifty. Forty. 30. Minimums. Minimums. Committed. 20. 10. And we are down. Nose is down. Reverse thrusters are on. There's the We'll take Let's see, yes. We take this one here, the Bravo. Ryanair 186, exit runway when able. Yes indeed, dear, yes indeed. They do get petulant, don't they? Ryanair 186, contact ground on 121.7. Napoleon Bonaparte, airport information. 121.7, Ryanair 186. Okay, I'm just going to stop here while we do the cleanup. So, lights off. And crew is released to go to work and turn all these off. I was able to follow that ADF all the way in. So everything is looking very good. All right. And turn that on. And now we're going to go over there and go to stand at number four. I checked with the flight radar and saw that the previous flight actually docked at stand four. This scenery, of course, is P3D default, but we should be able to still go to the same stand as much as we can. So we'll make our turn here onto the Tango Taxiway. You know, the geographic scenery surrounding this airport is really very, very beautiful. Welcome to Corsica. Now, from what I can understand, Stand 4 will be over at the far left of that terminal building. Not 
this one but the next one. Here's a look at the the scenery around this airport. Look at that. And now we're going to turn right down here and this is number four. They are standard looking terminal buildings, I know, but you know, the scenery around it though is really rather good. And coming up to our stop and okay right parking brake on and engines off and stairs and doors down Right, everything is is shutting off. Everything is nominal, and good. Tikas is off. Right. Now then, everybody's got off. Fuel is off. APU off. Battery off, and shutdown is complete. How about that? Well, Ray Thomas, we made it. And it wasn't a bad landing either. I had everything set up because that four mile circle is right at the point where they make the turn to come in to land. And you have to have the gear down and everything set up for landing at four miles and that is what Ryanair wants as well. But it's also a safety issue. So we were well prepared for that turn and then to come in for landing. So we did all right. We didn't crash. Any landing that you can walk away from is always a good landing. So thank you, Ray, for the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. And I hope that you enjoyed the scenery en route, especially as we flew over the Alps. Magnificent views. And I will see you again on another flight. And everyone else, I'll see you all next week on a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.